Greetings, this is Indian in the Machine. In today's video, Nasara and Jasara. And we're going to get right into it because I, I know this is an update that a lot of you have been waiting for. And wait no longer, my friends, because this news is going to help propel it all forward. And listen up, and you will come to that conclusion, I'm sure. Now, at uh, the Jasara News website, they go into exactly what Nasara and Jasara may be. And they post some qualities of Nasara. And uh, I'm basically going to summarize it. We won't get into these details, but it essentially involves a reconfiguration of the world financial systems with Nasara being North America and Jasara being the global economic reform. Okay, so we're basically wiping the old game clean and we're coming up with a new game, which involves then canceling debt. Uh, and that would include debt for countries, personal debts, credit card debts, etc., mortgages and so on, income tax. And basically the old game was rigged, right? We basically all know that at this point. Well, maybe not everyone because not everyone has economic education of any sort. And that's something that we need to note, okay? So basically, from what I understand, it's going to happen when it starts to roll out. And Masar Jasar is basically like the RV, which is the revaluation of currencies. So it's kind of this, pretty much the same thing, right? And it's gonna roll out in a transition when it does roll out. But there appears to have been delays and a lot of people are frustrated. People are at their financial end and there's feelings of desperation and frustration. And, and light workers are wondering, and others who are aware of Nasara and Chasar, we're wondering what's going on? Where is it? We're getting impatient. We need information. So let's get into that. At the Era of Light website, they reposted a message from St. Germain on Nasara, channeled by Caroline Oceana Ryan. And this issue has come up again, and there's some great information here. Okay, so let's read a portion of this message. Caroline says, Greetings, Lord St. Germain. Thank you for speaking with us today. Germain, greetings all. We are, as always, honored to assist. Caroline, so many are wondering whether Nasara is just a pipe dream at this point, or they might fully accept that it is real, yet feel that too much is in the way for its full enactment, so that we are held in limbo, knowing our freedom and sovereignty are at hand, yet not quite here. Many feel that much suffering will occur more than has already occurred before that moment can arrive. So my question today would be, can you enlighten us on that point? And what can we do to speed the enactment as more dense actions from the old powers that were loom on the horizon? St. Germain says, we are of course happy to speak on these matters. It is, it is not a positive for any of you to live in the era of supposition and perhaps come to the inaccurate conclusion that things are stuck in some way, that Nassara cannot come forward or will be greatly delayed or only partially enacted. None of this is true. Despite appearances and much dark programming and dense energy being transmitted against humanity, much progress is being made and will continue to be made. 
until the moment when the announcement is made on every available screen that Nasara is here. We will say that what you have intuited, that there's tremendous opposition to that moment, is correct. Yet, that does not equal defeat in this matter. Humanity has already chosen en masse to experience its sovereignty and to experience that moment when Earth rejoins the galactic and intergalactic confederations. It is not so much that apparent delays or a timeline that unfolds in ways that differ from human preference equal defeat. You now live in a kind of void, a moment of transition from one plane to the next, where it appears that perhaps, though not all is lost, much is lost. That can be very wearying, very trying. This is the part of human ascension into higher thought, higher experience, higher matter that you have perhaps hoped to avoid, and yet you cannot. This moment is not in the way. It is the way. Okay, so we'll leave this message here and I'll repost it so you can check it out in its entirety. And I've highlighted basically some aspects of what appears to be a delay. Now, please read this knowing that the delay, if you look at it as a delay, it's going to be delayed. Okay, so, but we're gonna look at it as a, like a third dimensional delay so that we can transmute that um, thought form and move on to manifesting Nasara. And we're gonna have to take responsibility here. And you'll know that when we get through this. But number one is that humanity is living the dark hats version of reality in particular in this case the financial systems okay so we're stuck because we're you know we're paying our bills we're using the money that we have we're um calculating interest we're we're paying interest we're paying income tax so on and so forth so this is actually the dark hats version of the financial system they created the financial system so that's one reason why we're delayed here and as i said it's not a delay number two frustration impatience um yeah so this basically is not manifesting Nasara and Jasara. It basically pushes it away. So, hey, I can relate to the frustration and to the impatience and we're wondering, where is it? Bring it in now. Don't delay it, etc. But these are the thought forms that actually do delay it. Okay, so sometimes uh, knowing too much information can make it all the more harder because we know something is coming, but we're not wanting to wait. And we're angry, we're even hopeless in some cases, and in some cases have given up. So if you're hopeless and you're almost giving up, how can you say that that's attracting Nasara because it isn't so we need to do a a tweak there on that one and you know these points they're all related to one another three we're not living like it exists so what I'm saying is make plans like Nasara has happened and, you know, actually, this is like pretend, isn't it? In a way. 
but how else are you going to create something new unless you can live like it ex exists already? So that means make some plans that the money is here for everybody. Maybe that's a blueprint for a new house. Maybe you want to start a new business. Maybe there's a new invention that you are inspired to create. Well, get it going. This helps to create the momentum, not only for yourself, but for everyone. Number four, the void. Now, as we are creating a new financial system, we can look at it as rebirthing a new financial system. So there is that moment between the old and the new. And we're in that moment right now. So that doesn't mean the new is not happening, but it means that there's this period where kind of neither in a way is tipping the scales. And this is just simply the way it is. So we can just, if something is just the way it is, why not just accept it? You know, it's, we can't like be like a, like a fetus trying to force itself out of its mother's womb by sheer will. If all of the elements aren't ready for the for the birthing okay so prepare you know that's what the void is it's like a pre preparation phase where you're you know you're in the middle of of two two polarities or you know something like that number 5 not in collective consciousness Okay, so basically there's only a percentage of people on the planet who are even aware that a new financial system is coming for the world. So who's going to tell them? Maybe it could be you. Maybe you could just help to spread the word. Have some faith because it's obviously there's obviously all there's always a next level right we're not going to be in this old system forever but share the energy of nasara chasara help people to understand give them the opportunity maybe this will create hope maybe this will create more momentum i'm pretty sure it will and number six, distracted, not focused, All right? So, okay, imagine like you're hungry. Do you then, in, in order to put food on your plate, do you experience frustration and impatience and because someone else hasn't put food on that plate and then you go to... Uh, your video games and you know some sort of television or movies etc as a strategy to put food on the plate no we don't do that normally you would get up and make it happen so nasara and jasara is the same thing get up and help make it happen. Number seven. So old habits die hard. So essentially this is, you know, like we have created lives where everything we do is based on an old system of finance and in instead of a new system of finance. So right from when we get up we go to work to earn that money, the old money. We go put, 
gas in our cars, we look at the high prices, it's the old system, we pay with the old money, etc. When we go for lunch, we hand them some more old money. So all of this is basically old, well, it's, it's present energy, but it's based on the old system and so on and so forth. So this also prevents the new from manifesting. So now let's go to some points on manifesting Nasara Jasara. Number one, we get spiritual. We meditate. We meditate to get our inspiration our guidance from our Creator, and this helps us to manifest Nasara because the spiritual is the cause and the physical is the effect. That's why. Number two. So we gotta like embrace Nasara Jasara into our energy field by relaxing into it. So we, we lessen that frustration, we come into expectation, and we excite our cells and our energy bodies with how it feels when you think about something new. You know, like if you, let's say you're going to buy something like, and it excites you. It's exactly like that. So get excited about it. Energize yourself with this new concept. And, you know, it's going to be a spiritual renaissance. Isn't that going to be exciting? Well, let's be excited now. Let's be excited now imagining the new technologies coming forth. People having enough. People no longer starving from lack of money. This is incredible. Number three. So we live like it exists. So mind you, we don't have the new money in our hands, but energetically, we can live like it's in everyone's hands. So this could mean living like we support the process of new technologies. Living like uh, everyone is in much better health and is treated fairly in the financial sense. And we gotta just ground that energy is what this is about. And we can do that. Like in point number four, we imagine just how incredible life is when finances are no longer limiting us. So I'm not going to say that uh, the new system is going to be completely unlimited because I, I don't believe that. There are going to be some constraints, but basically the constraints are going to be more about preventing an inevitable monopoly like we have in this old system. I'm not saying that the new system is going to be like communism because I don't support that myself. But what I do support is that we all are treated financially fairly and that we can create a system that isn't um, fixed. And that's what we don't need ever again. So, number five, we bring this into the collective consciousness, meaning make websites, print material, plant seeds in other people for this concept because we have, what, eight billion people who in their 
consciousness and in the collective consciousness are still supporting the old system even if we don't like it. You can still not like something and you are still supporting it. So we have to help people to realize the importance of our individual and collective thoughts in what humanity creates. And as well, these details of Nasara will help people to imagine, which is their participation in the collective consciousness. Maybe they have an invention that they would like um, finances for. Maybe some people have been renters their entire life and they would like to own their own house. Maybe there's billions of people who have business ideas, but they don't do much with those ideas because they don't truly believe they will be financially supported. Number six, focus. So if we want a new system, why do we think we're going to distract ourselves into, into it? You know, like playing a video game isn't going to put, you know, that dinner or that meal on the plate. So we focus on Nisara and Jasara, which is related to the other points. And number seven, create new habits. So let's say if we were going to create a Nisara Jasara lifestyle, maybe that would involve when you first wake up, instead of counting how much money you don't have, why not count how much money can be here and it may show up like you don't know maybe today's the day but if it isn't why push it away so throughout our day we can imagine ourselves with others that everyone has enough and that we're not held back by the debt by financial slavery by interest rates by exchange rates etc the devaluation of the dollar that you know we kind of need to basically move beyond the old and we've created entire lives based on essentially old financial habits so lose that as much as you can i realize we still got to be practical but energetically is where our power to change things truly is okay now Here's a message from, let's see if I can pull this up. Okay, so here's a message from Queen Anra, channeled from Arena Velasquez. And who is Queen Anra? Well, she says, I am Queen Anra, Grand Council of New Earth Council, and I just recently became the leading council of the Planet Planetary Intergalactic Coalition, which is a new alliance created to help civilizations to have a peaceful coexistence between each other. Okay, I just want to highlight a portion of this message, a link to the entirety for you to check out. But um, let's read this point here. 
I've been very busy with my new responsibilities, and I didn't forget about my tasks of New Earth Council. I've been continuously changing and replacing the ground crew members because they're not fulfilling their requirements of launching Nasara Jasara. QFS, Quantum Financial System, RV, Revaluation of Currencies, and etc. They keep finding a million of excuses to delay the transition. Okay, so that is important because, you know, in order for Nassara Jassara to even be here, some of us have had to believe. Some of us have had to take on responsibilities to ground the base energy of it and to put our necks out from the masses, if you will, and suggest that there could be something new for all of us. However, with the frustration, with the delays, which is basically 3D energy that a lot of the ground crew members have been jamming out. And they're not going to be around forever if that's what they offer or put on the table. Okay, so I get it. There are reasons to be frustrated and angry and doubtful and hopeless. But that's not helping. That makes it harder for those we are supposed to be helping, which is each other. So, as we've touched upon, there are many strategies we can incorporate to bring Nasara and Jasara forward. And this is the way to manifest it. So my challenge to you, whether you consider yourself to be a light worker or a ground crew member or not, maybe you're just a regular kind of person. Well, you have the power to bring this thing forward. It's very clear that when we look at Nasara and Jasara from a 5D perspective instead of a 3D perspective, we can see that we can be instrumental and we can make a difference and we can bring hope, we can bring practical solutions and we are the ones that we are waiting for. So I thank you for listening. I thank you for sharing this video because I feel it touches upon points that people simply need to hear. No matter where you are in the financial game and no matter why you're here on the planet, that this new system is going to change life as we know it for everyone and we can all do our part to help manifest it into the collective consciousness and for that i thank you and thank you for listening this is indian in the machine signing out